So here we have a very quick review of the Zugong V2 Pro. This is the foldable quad um, designed by Immersion RC and it has a, what I believe is a Foytek 2D gimbal up the front. Um, it's a great quad. Uh, it's got the Easy OSD, quadcopter version OSD, um, bolted or integrated into the top electronics plate here, which I'll show you in a moment. As you can see, it folds down very nice. Um, I've got the 2312 800kV, um, the DJI E305 motors, and the carbon composite props on this one. Um, I did have the original props, however, there was a little bit of flex, and I think it caused some problems with the, the gimbal stability. Um, using an MA10 GPS um, does have the added bonus of being able to use the GLONASS satellite system as well. As you can see, it fits a 4S 5200 mAh multi-star LiPo very nicely. Uh, there you can see we have the LED unit. I've put a LiPo buzzer on the top there so I can plug, plug the um, balance lead into it. I'll turn it around. And on the front right hand side we've got a D4R2. Uh, might keep that there, might swap it for TBS Crossfire, not sure yet. And in the front left we have a um, Immersion RC 5.8 gig uh, video transmitter and a skew plane on the top. Um, if you do buy one of these, be warned, it's a, a pain in the ass to wire up, or well, not necessarily wire up, but just to cram everything inside here. It's a real pain in the neck, and specifically getting these. Um, and these anti-vibration jello mounts in when you've got the bottom plate in. So what I'll do now is I'll, uh, I'll unfold it so you can see what it looks like. One thing to mention, I am also using the Hobbywing X-Rotor 20 amp ESCs. Uh, I have found them to be very good, dead easy to set up and pretty much fire and forget. So that's it folded out. So you can see the front props don't overhang the gimbal, so the gimbal doesn't suffer from prop wash. There you can see the eight anti vibration balls or mounts. There's two holders, one on each side as well, so just in case you have a crash and the board comes off, then it doesn't rip itself to pieces. And if I show you here, you can see what happens. See the jello balls compressing. So that ideally is your dirty and clean separation mechanism to try and keep the vibrations away from the clean plate which holds the gimbal. Um, there's not really much more to say on the quad apart from when you do build it, keep an eye on your ESCs here. When I built mine, my ESCs were right inside there and the caps were actually touching on the top part of the clean plate and transmitting the vibrations down to the clean plate which resulted in jello on my GoPro. Um, as you can see there's now a gap there, I moved them about 5 to 10 mil out on the arms and I no longer have any jello. Um, how does it fly? It flies brilliantly. Um, using 4S on these 800 kV props, sorry, 800 kV motors, I have had to dial down the NASA gains down to around about 75 across the board. Um, it flies, it's, I, I actually quite like it and I haven't liked that many quads, but this one does fly really, really nice, really smooth. Uh, it's easy to fly for a, for a Muppet like me. So let's see if I can give you an underneath shot. There's not a lot to see, but whilst we're here, there you go, you can see the 4S5200 wedged in there. 
There's your NASA. Let's say M flash to version 2. Uh, one other thing to note, I don't think you can see it in there, um, is that you do still need to use the NASA power module to power the NASA, even though the top electronics plate does supply 5 and 12 volts to all of the other ancillary equipment. So don't do what I did, assemble it all and then wonder why you haven't got any power to the receiver or the NASA. Make sure you're using one of the little cheap £5 um, NASA V1 uh, power supply modules. You can just about see the capacitors to them in there. So they are in there. Like I say, it's a tight squeeze. Um, I do have to tidy up the the GoPro cable um, try and keep it away from all of the other electronics the gimbal does work well some people are suffering from what appears to be a twitch in the roll axis on these immersion branded gimbals um, can't say I've seen that much on mine uh, I'm not that much of a professional photographer to notice anyway it's just nice to fly around the park and have a bit of fun with so let's turn around a bit more. So let's see if we can give you a bit of view in there. I have used liquid electrical tape on all of the power connections to try and keep it as uh, isolated and as tidy as possible. Uh, the MA10 GPS is on a taro style mount. As you can see, it looks just like an XT60, but it has two keys, so you can get it in either, well, the right way or 180 degrees around. But as you can see, it clicks in nicely, doesn't rotate. Uh, one other thing to notice as well, when you're setting the puck position in the NASA software, um, the actual centre of gravity is slightly behind where the motors or the motor line intersects so the motor intersect line I believe is around about here but your center of gravity is more like around about there so just make sure you get your X Y and your Z values right when you're setting up the GPS puck in the NASA assistant software anyway Oh, uh, importantly, around about, I'd say, a good 17 minutes proper flying. And um, I do mean proper, you know, flying around like uh, a nutter, basically. Um, so 22 minutes is a little bit uh, ambitious from what Immersion IC have been saying. But 18 minutes is definitely easy. Um, I suppose 22 minutes in a hover. Um, in an enclosed area is possible, but who wants to sit and hover? Uh, the only thing that I possibly will change in this one is the position of the VTX antenna. When you're flying away from you, if you imagine you're flying away, you've got a big lump of carbon and a battery in between you and the VTX. So I might try and bend it and maybe have it sticking out down towards the ground. We shall see. Anyway, um, any questions, ask away, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you do, like, thumbs, and all the rest of it. Thanks very much. Bye for now.